Well, to our salute to the flag. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Here. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Here. Councilor Angeloni? Here. Councilor Caprio? Councilor Diamond? Here. Councilor Fawnett? Councilor Fusey? Here. Councilor Hodgson? Councilor Rose? Here. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from the October 22nd, 2014 Town Council meeting? I'll make a motion. I'll second it. Moved by Councillor Fusey, seconded by Councillor Diamond. Roll call. Mayor Candelar? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councillor Angeloni? Abstain. Councillor Diamond? Yes. Councillor Fusey? Yes. Councillor Rose? Yes. May I have a motion to approve the October 23rd, 2014 mm -hmm. special? So moved. Second. Um, moved by Deputy Mayor Wentworth, uh, seconded by Councillor Diamond. Roll call. Mayor Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Abstain. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. <coughs> Water Pollution Control Authority Agenda. Item 3, Correspondence Citizen Statements. Unfinished Business. New Business. Citizen Statements. Petitions. No, that's not, that's not serious. Regular town council meeting. Item seven, reports of committees, boards, and commissions. Item A, economic development <coughs> commission. Yes, uh, so Mayor, before I begin, I just, we're having a little trouble with the uh, audio there. Hope we don't get around for any feedback, but uh, we'll try to get through with the, uh, with the tapes. And probably helpful to announce it also to, to our cell phones, a reminder on our cell phones to so shut those down, put those on silent. Um, the Economic Development Commission had a uh, very good uh, productive meeting in Charette this uh, past weekend on Saturday at the MBIS cafeteria. Um, I think there were approximately 60 plus people in attendance. Uh, our consultant um, from Yale, Alan Plattis and Andre Hartwell went through their uh, presentation and I think there was a pretty good uh, give and take question and answer period at the end. Um, it went over the um, three 3 p.m. Uh, deadline and well into 3.30, 3.40, and that's because I think it was a pretty robust uh, discussion with respect to uh, the balance that, that, uh, that they're trying to strike with the economic development and uh, um, development of that site with um, green space incorporation, if you will, in keeping with the, with the character of the town and, and making it a focal point as a, um, a town center, if you will. It, it is... Um, uh, you know, a smaller site, but five acres uh, that has uh, quite good potential. So they went through uh, some 3D renderings and, and <coughs> talked about the uh, potential layout of the buildings, and um, a lot of the information uh, was gathered that they can incorporate. And again, it's, it's a work in progress that, that they, uh -huh. I think, took as very good feedback uh, to bring back to the EDC and to continue to work on that uh, and bringing it forward to a final report uh, that they're in charge with giving uh, in the next couple of months, which will lead to a RFP process, I hope, by January or February. And then, it, you know, let the process uh, take its course. But um, again, the work in progress, and we'll have to incorporate all the comments that came out of Saturday's meeting and take it from there. But uh, I think it's somewhere down the road after that report, uh, the Economic Development Commission is going to meet on the uh, 17th. And then from there, I think probably coming back to the council at some point just to let you know where, where they are and give you a better idea in terms of the timeline for that process. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Item B, Permanent Project Building Committee. Uh, the next meeting is Monday, November 10th. Item C, BOE Town Council Communication Subcommittee. That m next meeting also is for November 10th. Um, I would like to add, if I could amend, D for the Fire Commission. <laughs> the liaison, the board on. 
Um, okay, I'd like to make a motion to amend the agenda to add item D, Fire Commission. Second. Moved by Council Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Newman? <coughs> yes. Councilor Fawnett? Yes. Councilor Pesey? Yes. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. <coughs> okay, now I guess we have to make another motion to put item 7D, a report from the Fire Commission. Correct. I make that motion. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wetmore. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wetmore? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Bonnet? Yes. Councilor Pussy? Yes. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Um, on, uh, I believe it was Thursday, October 30th, there was a Board of Fire Commissioners meeting where the board had met to discuss um, the chief and they put out a press release and the purpose of this letter and press release authored by the North Bramford <laughs> Board of Fire Commissioners is to support Fire Chief William Seward III and his ability to perform the required duties assigned to his Ooh. position. If I have any more outbreaks, you're going to be removed. These duties include, but are not limited to, responsibilities outlined in North Brantford Town Code Chapter 40-7 and the position description for the Chief of Fire Services authorized by this board. As many townspeople have heard, the possibilities exist that a propane storage facility may be constructed at 40 Zero Road. As part of this process, the applicant applied to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a regulation change that would allow for the storage of propane. It was during this process that Chief William Seward III was called upon by the Commission to seek his professional advice on this project. Before we began to explain our position on this matter, we assembled some facts about our chief. The North Brantford Board of Fire Commissioners hired Chief Seward based upon his impeccable employment history, college degrees, and many years of experience in career fire department. His skill, knowledge, and abilities related to emergency medical service operations and his ability to lead a professional volunteer fire department into a new era of service delivery Additionally, he is involved in regional activities as fire chief serving as the chairperson for the Connecticut Department of Emergency Management, Homeland Security's Region 2 Hazardous Materials Team. Since becoming fire chief in 2005, Chief Seward has demonstrated a high level of administrative competence, communicates clearly, concisely, effectively, blends management skills and technical expertise, and has effectively developed individual management skills with technical expertise and has effectively developed individual departmental and organizational goals to meet the objectives of the North Brantford Fire Department. Most recently, he has led the department into a new service delivery through the implementation of a fire department-based paramedic service that in a short time has been instrumental in saving residents' lives. Even though the position is part-time, it holds full-time responsibilities. To those few points, the Board of Fire Commissioners realized they hired the right person to lead the town's fire service. The matter of opening a propane storage facility in this community has brought to the forefront many faces in our town. Some have smiles, others frowns with frustration. It has forced some to form unified front to stop such projects while others freely voice their opinions toward the proposal. Potential occupant, town officials, and our fire chief. In particular, a small but boisterous select group of residents have taken the opportunity to humiliate, defame, and spread rumors about Chief Seward. As the chief's superiors, we emphatically disagree with this type of public behavior focused <coughs> against our department leader. More importantly, his professional opinion and facts that he has presented to the Town Council, Planning and Zoning Commission, and the Inland Wetlands Agency is based upon national standards 
for the propane industry. He has stated numerous times that the proposed project meets and or exceeds National Fire Protection Association 58 standard for the storage and handling of liquefied petroleum gases and similar Connecticut fire safety codes. Furthermore, town fire officials, Fire Chief Seward, Deputy Fire Chief Esposito, Fire Marshal Bunnell, Deputy Fire Chief O'Brien, and Deputy Chief of Training Colangelo, along with other town staff, met with Jody Pratt, a Menden of Deputy Chief of Training and Energy Consulting LLC to formulate the required propane facility fire safety analysis. This written document substantiates and supports the ability of the town's fire department to meet the minimum requirements set forth under applicable codes and standards to plan, prepare, respond, mitigate, recover from a propane incident. However, during a recent town meeting, members of the public accused the fire chief of lying about the department's capabilities to handle such an emergency based upon their interpretation of a February 2014 Insurance Serv Services Office Public Protection Classification Survey. The community should realize this report was very positive for our department and taxpayers alike since the results in fact demonstrate an improvement in the level of fire protection delivered by the North Brantford Fire Department. Our changes in operational procedures, training, equipment, and mutual aid agreements moved us from a class four slash nine to a new category of four slash four Y, parentheses 4.8 B. Residents and business owners may witness a decrease in their fire insurance premiums with this new rating schedule. As a board, we recognize that the average citizen would not understand the actual rating schedule or grading that goes into this process. Furthermore, certain subcategories may be viewed as deficiencies, but this is due to the lack of dedicated training facility for the fire department, lack of town infrastructure for water mains, and a single dispatcher to handle fire, police, EMS, public works communications. Each of these areas can be improved, and as the Board of Fire Commissioners, we fight yearly for service upgrades during the budget process. In addition to the facts cited above, Chief Seward has maintained an open line of communication between him and representatives from the Fire Marshal's office and has presented related information to the Board during our regular monthly meetings. He has continually stressed the fact that his proposed project exceeds fire safety requirements stated in NFPA 58. It is a fact the fire safety consultant listened to the chief and his staff implementing a fire protection system that provides a high level of safety for the public. In return, the proposed site owners agreed to provide additional training for fire personnel and provide supplemental equipment that may be employed for suppression operations. A representative from the Propane Education and Research Council called PERC also offered their expertise into supplemental training for our members. Another point brought forward during a recent public meeting from an angry citizen focused on the next gen system not working. Thus the chief lied again about the department's response. It is a fact that the next gen system referred to is managed and controlled by the town's emergency communication system within the police department. As the chief advised this board, there have been some periods where this information management system has failed. However, this is not the radio system or our radio system communications in dispatching units to calls has not been disrupted. As a board, we must place emphasis on the fact that many citizens within this community are unaware of the intricacies pertaining to fire safe service delivery. We must state strongly, today's fire department is not like that which many remember. We must conform to state and national standards and there is no difference between those requirements, whether one is a career or a professional volunteer firefighter or fire officer. More importantly, comments made during public meetings by the untrained, uninformed person against our men and women should not be entertained. 
Moreover, it is not the chief's responsibility to provide an evacuation plan for residential and or health care facilities. It is, however, that owner's responsibility working in concert with the town's emergency management officials to, to devise such plans. Most similar occupancies in the state have instituted an all hazards plan approach following federal recommendations and guidelines. We are all concerned about prudent physical management, providing good reliable services to the public, and maintaining taxes that we all can afford. The community should know that since 2005, the North Brantford Fire Department has received more than $1.1 million in federal grants that is aid in su sustaining our comprehensive operations. Without the grant funds that were applied for by Chief Seward, two things would have occurred. First, the town would have been responsible for the full, full amount or worse. The department would not be in a position to respond to fires and other emergencies due to lock lack of proper training, equipment required by NFPA and OSHA. To that point, we are most grateful to have Chief Seward lead our 110 person department. Finally, every now and then the news media generates frenzy over what is statistically a very rare occurrence. Cameras can make drama. As a town appointed board responsible for the fire service, we established high standards for administrating starting at the top. Firefighter safety and well-being has always been a top priority. There are over 60 propane storage facilities in this state. Some are protected by career personnel, while others by volunteer fire departments. Facility installations must all meet the same criteria. A fire safety analysis must be developed which includes fire service delivery capabilities. It is our belief that similar facilities are no more disruptive to the community than any other facility that is zoned in that zoned location. Excessive noise is not an issue. These facilities are neat, clean, and may be visually superior to many other industrial locations nearby. Therefore, the North Brantford Board of Fire Commissioners hereby supports and will continue to support Chief William Seward III in his endeavor to provide the highest level of service, fire service, delivered to the citizens of this community. Respectfully submitted, Chairperson Joseph Vitello, Vice Chairman Ed Bernier, <coughs> Anthony Della Camera, Kenneth Ash, and Andrew Campion. Thank you. <coughs> the town manager's report on CMED. Uh, <coughs> nothing to report for CMED other than there will be uh, a meeting next week on the 13th. I um, hope that we'll have more information and report back on the 18th. Um, item B, the assessor <coughs> position. Yes, um, moving along on that process in terms of selecting uh, the uh, panel met last week to interview candidates and I'm happy to report that I'll have uh, two qualified candidates to bring forward for you uh, on the 18th. Now, Mike, when you said qualified candidates, what? What are some of the differences between these two? And well, uh, you know, we're looking for um, a um, designation of a CMA 2, you know, Certified Master Appraisal uh, 2 candidate, and that's the way we advertise for. Um, so we, we have that. Um, and uh, there are two uh, candidates that I feel are um, certainly uh, kind of neck and neck, um, and that I'd like to bring those forward. The third one, um, in terms of the interview process and quite match up to that and doesn't carry the, the uh, two designations. So um, they're certified and licensed uh, assessors in the state of Connecticut. Are they already working somewhere? Yes. Uh, item nine, community <coughs> events and presentations. <coughs> Item 
10, Citizen Statements, Petitions, Correspondence. Resignations and Appointments. A, Resignation, Mark Perez, Conservation and Inland and Wetlands Commission. We will accept that resignation. Second. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wentworth, seconded by Councilor Angeloni. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Fleming? Yes. Councilor Cusick? Abstain. Councilor Hoster? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Unfinished business, discussion and action. Item A, update to the defined benefit plan. Um, this remains table. Yeah. Item B, uh, town internship, UNH graduate student, dual degree candidate to EMPA. Right, this is a, there's a packet in there. Um, this was table or pushed uh, from the last uh, couple of meetings, but I, had this opportunity to uh, sit and, and meet with this uh, gentleman who is a dual candidate graduate student, uh, University of New Haven, looking for an internship. I thought it would be a great opportunity to bring somebody in to help uh, in terms of both the emergency management and economic development. Uh, seems sort of tailor-made uh, in terms of opportunity, given what we're looking at in terms of uh, development activity and uh, some help with getting the records and record keeping and files and plans up to date with emergency management. So, um, you know, bringing his name forward. Uh, I was looking at this um, kind of setting us as a town apart from other, the other towns that he's looking at uh, in terms of offering a small stipend on just the portion of the emergency management. Uh, if nothing else, just to put some you know, pay for gas in his tank coming from uh, Norwalk. And he's not a, a young 22-year-old. He's a mid-career level uh, individual adult that's, uh, uh, as you see from his uh, resume background, uh, he's pursuing uh, two degrees. And I did the reference checks and talked with uh, the uh, commanders within the Coast Guard that he's worked with and um, his, sup uh, his professors and uh, everything comes back that this is a uh, a uh, gentleman who's very passionate about what he does in terms of emergency management, and uh, uh, he also holds a realtor's uh, license. Uh, is practicing, has practiced, I guess, as a realtor. Uh, I think can aid in some of our economic development uh, activities that we're doing. So it'd be two, two days a week, up to you know, s I think six hours a day for 12 hours uh, for the week, and uh, I think he'd be able to hit the ground running and help us, uh, or at least help me, help the community uh, get some some of the work done. With both both areas, he's going to work with the police chief and the fire chief both. Well, no, I, he'll be under my direct supervision. Um, right. I mean, he'll have some contact when. Right, when he's he going to need to work with them. I mean, that that wouldn't hurt to have him talk to our guys and see what oh, we absolutely. got for plans and emergency plans and everything. And absolutely, I mean, we're talking to somebody that was in the military, so that's that's a good thing as far as discipline and respect and everything like that. And I don't think it's a bad thing to do. I think it's a good thing to do. He def within the realm of emergency management, be talking to all of the uh, individual personnel that we have involved, right? right? Exactly. So he he can do a lot of the tracking things down, and right. Uh, he can also review things for us. Reviewing, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Like why I, it's a lot of this? paperwork. A lot of you know. It's not like he's going to be in the field doing and directing or anything like that. It's more of you know. It's an academic kind of you know planning, looking, reviewing our plans, updating our plans, looking at deficiencies, trying to identify deficiencies finding out where the information is, making sure that gets <coughs> the, the reports are, are generated and submitted on time and so forth. With respect to the emergency management, with respect to the economic development, again, more, more uh, legwork, if you will, in terms of research and, and looking at, you know, putting together uh, profiles and when like, you know, the CERT uh, state um, uh, site finder requests come in to say, hey, do you have a parcel that has, you know, five clear, you know, acres and is in a B1 and, you know, uh, access to, you know, transportation kind of things, uh, he, he can track that stuff down for us. And then we're also talking EOC, right? Well, e EOC in yeah. terms of if in, during this duration he is um, part of a drill in the next few months, uh, yeah, he can participate in that, but it'd be in a sort of backseat. I'm not suggesting that he's going to take on the role of right. any 
command position in terms of emergency management, but more of a um, assistant and or uh, clerical person to help us with volunteering with uh, efforts. How long do you think you'd be working here? Uh, through the semester, through, through, yeah, through May. I mean, at one point, we were looking at putting a generator here. I mean, we have half equipment here that we had received from a grant. We have a room set up for the EOC. Right. Um, that is the deficiency here, is right? Is, right. Is to do that, we need the de generator. Do we have still the numbers for the generator and the cost? Because we really should. We're like halfway. The thing yep. is, uh, this is just my opinion. I think we should look out more to the future and, and try and design something where we can centralize our services and make an emergency management. We need a police department building really bad. We could do a town hall over on 22 where we have all the land, do all the stuff together with an ambulance building, build it, be set with it for 30 years. We bring the town both sides together in the middle. I just hate to see us keep piecemealing something when we can actually put this building on the, on the market and put it back on the tax rolls. Right. And the, the ambulance building in Northford, we could probably do that also. And if we could centralize all our services in one area, it could actually become a gathering place for all the people in our town too. So uh, it's just my opinion. I, I just hate to see us keep dumping money into these old buildings and, and doing stuff like that, but that's just my opinion. I think long term it's a good idea. I, I think short term though, we at least got to get numbers on you know. Right, well the only building with a generator is the PD, right? Right. Yeah. Right. right. And, and it's just I'm sad that we <coughs> Here. Right. Um, that's a it's, a, it's a hard decision. I mean, do you fix a, a little thing now or do right. we well, look well, five, ten, fifteen years down the road and, and have everything set and done? Right. But I mean, it's, it's up for discussion, obviously. Yeah. Michael, in terms of the internship, um, was, did this person seek us out or do we, do we ask for applications I saw no I, I saw it come in as a uh, an email on listserv from managers that uh, this individual was available and uh, so you know I, I hit the tab to review and and saw that it was you know dual masters and you know just to see what the background was um, mm -hmm. and this then uh, called his uh, professor his advisor uh, and started the ball rolling that way Mike have you given us a projected cost for this? Have you quantified what the stipend is going to be? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, in fact, uh, I think, you know, we can write this as, it was. I was trying to write this as an up to, not to exceed 15, but I think we could even, you know, whack that down to somewhere between 10 and 12 or, you know, 10 to 12 and six hours uh, a week. So, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, 24, uh, so 240 uh, a, a month uh, and doing that uh, for five, mo five, about five months, I guess. So about $1,000, $1,200, something like that. $1,000, $1,200 for what? For In total cost. Total, total cost. Because the, the dollar amount is only when he works on emergency <coughs> management. So it's roughly half the time is what you're exactly, yeah. calculating. I'd actually like to sit and talk to him. I think I could learn some things from uh, somebody like that. To be honest with you. Sure. It wouldn't hurt to be in our position and, and know a little more about that stuff. So I look at it differently. I look at his resume and see he, has, he doesn't stay anywhere more than about a year and a half. And, you know, in, in all careers, it's not, it's not the town's fault that is, you know, I don't know how old he is, but his middle management or whatever guy decided to go back to school. Um, so, you know, with all the young kids in terms, like even, uh, you know, school teachers, they have to teach a whole semester for free. So I don't know, I don't know why we would pay him. Um, you know. He's got to drive from Norwalk every day. <laughs> that's, that's right. But he's trying to better himself. Yeah, I understand, but uh, I don't know. I look at things differently, I guess. I like his military bra background. Well, he doesn't honest. have a military background. He said the Coast Guard. Were, oh, he, he Coast was in Guard Auxiliary no. from 2009 to the present. Coast Guard Auxiliary. No, he's oh, okay. no military background. He's worked with How, the Auxiliary. What is he in? His, about 30 or so? Not that uh, matters. I mean, no, mid-40s. Mid-40s? Oh, wow. Good for him. Going back to school. Yeah. Right. Right. 
I think that's great that's going back to school. But I don't know why. <coughs> Are, are there numbers we could see on the generator just for do we have that or is that something you, yeah we have that is eighty five thousand dollars is that installed everything in soup to nuts yeah and I know we had gas is that gas running on gas <laughs> I would like to make a motion to approve the request of the town manager to hire Mr. David Alexander to serve as an intern for the purpose of assisting the town with emergency management and economic development activities and that he receive a stipend only for the work he performs on an emergency management task not to exceed, um, I'm going to put $1,500 during the total internship. Second. Uh, moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Roll call. Mayor Candelaria? No. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Fonin? Yes. Councilor Fusey? No. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? No. Item to see. Can I, I, I got a question. So, so where are you getting the money for this, uh, Michael? I know you think you said that. Where, where, yeah, where uh, out of the um, emergency management account uh, or public safety account for forty-two fifty. So the only point I'll make to that is we cut nickels out of the budget. So, so this year, remember, we got fifteen hundred extra there. All right. Item C, Connecticut Municipal RFQ for the Gigabyte Network. Uh, good evening. This is this is really exciting stuff. This is uh, we've been approached. The city of New Haven has kind of taken the lead along with Hartford and Stanford, and creating a RFQ to solicit firms to come in to build a gigabit speed network throughout the state of Connecticut. There are several of these throughout the country, Kansas City, uh, Chattanooga, uh, a bunch, and they, they figure when they, when they put the whole state of Connecticut together, it brings enough mass together for people that will be attractive for those firms. And just, just to give you an idea, we talk about gigabit speed. You could download 25 songs in one second, a TV show in three seconds, and an entire HD movie in 36 seconds. So we're talking about lightning speed. And what this does, it not only enhances quality of life for residents, it's also an economic development tool. Uh, in this day and age, part of, the, part of the strength of Connecticut is, is the biomed industry and the research they're doing. And they're partnered up with firms all around the country and around the world. And the size of the data files that they're sending as part of this research require this huge infrastructure of, of technology. So the thought is, you know, and, and in the example that uh, I went online, to, you can go online to Kansas City. Kansas City is being offered, the residents of Kansas City are being offered this gigabit network right now at $70 per month. Now I know I'm paying a lot more than that for a lot lower speed myself. I'm sure most, the average speed in Connecticut right now is nine megabits per second people have, residential. This is going to a thousand megabits, one gig. So again, it's gonna be a whole new way of life. And they equate these, this network kind of like what the railroad did back in the 1800s. Uh, the railroad, you had a railroad station in, in your town or your neighborhood, that's where the industry, that's where the, the commerce developed. And the goal behind these gigabit network is the same thing, it'd be an economic engine for the state uh, and, and the residents as well would piggyback. Again, the quality of life would greatly enhance and from an economic development perspective, if you're a company looking to go to one of these, there's probably, I think, 13 spots in the country now that have this network. Why not make Connecticut one of those spots? Uh, Google uh, Fiber is a big player in it. AT&T is a big player in it. Uh, and there's another company that escapes me right now. But the goal is, and a, as of today, uh, on the RFQ New Haven put together, New Haven obviously is on it. Stanford, West Hartford, Milford, Madison, Manchester. And they've also got interest from Bristol, Bridgeport, North Haven, Guilford, Woodbridge, Ansonia, Derby, and Shelton. So what we're looking for tonight, basically, is a conceptual buy-in 
that we want to become part of that RFQ process, put a two-pager together, the highlights of the town of North Brantford, to incorporate it onto this RFQ so that when it goes out to, to the street, and the Googles and the AT&Ts look at it, they say, okay, now we have this mass of people that want to participate and drive that, that whole proposal process. We're looking for a blessing tonight to <coughs> allow my, Mike and myself to can go forward and uh, fill the necessary paperwork out to get on board with this and also that the town council buys into it, basically. There's no cost, that's why I should mention that, it's probably the most important thing. There's no cost to the town. The proposal is the developer, whoever is successful developer, will come in and build it. So it's kind of like we turn back to the days when we, in the 1970s, when cable TV came down the road. It's that kind of mentality. It's a new pipe coming down the road, a high-speed pipe. And you can stay on your flip phone if you want to stay on your flip phone today, or you can go on to a smartphone. You can stay on your old internet, or you can go on this internet if you want to. But it's, it's going to be going to be night and day. And I think we should jump on board and be part of that movement if we could. Does that, does that mean that residents would have this service if we get it? If you opt to get on, yeah, the, like I said, the residents right now, the way they work it <coughs> is they typically go and they put on a website uh, a feeler, basically. Okay, we're going to come into North Brantford. Are you interested? And they, they break the town into sections. And they have a percent, they say 25% of what's called White Hollow area, for sake of argument. Sea Hill Road, pick a section of town. And once that gets on there, then you become part of the loop. Then they'll build you out. But not until they get enough sufficient people that want to play, you know, participate in the program, basically. Uh, but yeah, and like I said, Kansas City is $70 a month right now. You can go to Kansas City on, on the Google Fiber's website. And to bundle that with 150 channels of HDTV, it's $120 a month. Gigabit, and some, gigabit speed internet plus uh, 150 channels of HDTV. <laughs> plus they give you, I'll take that back, plus one terabyte of online storage. But uh, you have to Free. have a group of people in one area that want it. Is that what you're saying? Well, they, they group by neighborhoods. So they, they break the town into sections and they say, okay, and I think, I think it's 25% of that neighborhood has to buy into the program and then they'll, they'll run it down your street, your neighborhood basically. But they'll map so that the whole town right. has the ability, has the ability mm -hmm. as long as they have the percentage That's according exactly right. to their sections. Exactly right. Okay. Yep. So none of the sections of town would be left out. No. It would no. only then be left up to as long as they met the numbers, Correct. the minimum numbers. Correct. Mm -hmm. The thing is if we don't upgrade infrastructure with that and with buildings and everything how are we going to draw businesses and people to our town right we need to offer something and we need to, to start getting with the program with the times <laughs> and they also say you know a lot of your residents may, may telecommute it's a big thing now you know people right. walk the highways you yeah, stay at your house a lot of people work from home so if you have the high speed at your house and you're building data back and forth in your office again it in increases the productivity absolutely at a low cost and what would, what would the downside be there is no downside. No, so you don't get it. I'm sorry. You don't get it, and others do. Right. Yeah. You know, man, you I mean, or even behind the eight ball even more. And just to just to point out, I mean, one of the facts and reasons why Kansas City was a pilot and, and got it is because Kansas City owns all of the <coughs> utilities. So um, it, it was easy for uh, Google to work with one source in terms of the city to say, okay, they had the authority to string fiber on their poles because they owned all the utilities. So there was no, there was no other players. There wasn't anybody who just went from Google negotiating with Kansas City saying, done. And they did it. And because they owned it. And, and, and in Connecticut, they had the foresight uh, to put forth legislation that would allow uh, this same possibility on some Right, it's a municipal gain, it's called. It's a section of the telephone gain, pole I'm that's allowed for our use. And we could then turn to opt to get that use to Google, whoever else wins this bid, basically, at and whoever happens to be. There's, there's a, a section for power, cable, phones, and another <coughs> municipal spot in the middle there that we can use ourselves. Like the town of uh, Manchester, they strung their own fiber. They're about 10 years, they've, they've put their own fiber in. They, they're like the leader in a uh, few towns in Connecticut, the bigger towns, have actually put their own fiber network in place. You own it, you maintain it, it's a little bit costly, and for our town of our size, the way it's kind of geographically laid out, it wouldn't make much sense. But uh, again, but what Mike's talking about is the state had enough foresight years ago to put that municipal gain clause into the legislation. There's also a single poll administrator clause that just went in place this past year. It used to be where half the polls were owned by AT&T, some were owned by the power companies, and now the state has designated one entity to be in charge of all the polls. So that whole bureaucratic process of, okay, this is an AT&T poll, but this is a, a, a Walling for Electric poll, or UI poll, whatever, <coughs> it's all one place you're going for all of it. So the states put some groundwork in place to kind of make this 
facilitate this, if you will, with that unit, that, the municipal gain section and the common poll administrator. So they're kind of going down that path, and this is just like the next step to really get on board with that network, and we're looking for the town's blessing to do that. Where we spend a lot of time and effort to fill this out, and if the council's not behind it, then you kind of, you know, useless to do it. There's a motion on the second page, I believe. I'd like to make a motion be hereby resolved that the North Brantford Town Council directs the town manager and treasurer finance director to complete and forward any necessary document to include the town of North Brantford in the city of New Haven's request for qualifications RFQ number 2015-09-979 entitled Connecticut Municipalities Broadband Infrastructure <coughs> Update and Expansion Project and further cases their support for this project. I'll second that. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Councilor Diamond. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Fawnin? Yes. Councilor Fusi? Yes. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. Item D, financial report. This is actually the report from uh, the last month I got tabled. At this point, it's unremarkable. Uh, tax collections remain consistent with prior years. Revenue slightly ahead of prior years. Expenditures appear to be a little bit, a little bit ahead, but nothing too concerning at this point. I understand any questions anybody has. Unremarkable. Yeah, I have a question um, regarding uh, insurance. Okay. Now, when we do the payroll and you're taking out a percentage of insurance out of checks. For medical insurance? Or medical you? insurance. Now, if an error or something was made, let's say, on a percentage, how is that corrected or? We typically uh, contact the parties involved and we try to mirror the payback period uh, to the time frame that the error occurred. Uh, I'll be referring to we had an uh, issue uh, in the past fiscal year where uh, one of our bargaining units, their percentage of uh, premium share increased on January 1st. Typically everything happens July 1st in our world. And when we noticed that, we contacted the union president and we are proposing, I believe, over, we noticed it right in July, it was January, about, about half a year, and we're doing about the same half a year now to recoup that money. So by December 31st, everything will be square. Because it's on, ties into the W-2 as well, so it has to be the same uh, calendar year for W-2 purposes. But only the union president is notified, not the individual employees. Correct. Well, it's incumbent on him or her to... Right. Typically. See, you, you've already used over 80% of the technology. Are you going to have a problem? In it? Um, hang on, let me see. Some of it could be on the back side, tied in, in, in purchase orders too, Maria. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. um, yeah, we've actually don't, we've actually spent sixty five hundred dollars so far. Oh, it's just that it's encumbered. Yeah, it's encumbered. yeah. Purchase orders. That's for like the uh, Comcast for the internet and uh, uh, data processing services, backup services, the online services like that. So, the actual expenditure is sixty five hundred dollars so far. So I give you the back side of that page, shows the breakdown between the actual expenditures and the encumbrances. Is that the case you're referring to? Or, or case? Yeah, I mean, I was just curious because, like, especially how it could just happen, like, in one department and not, you know, across the board, and then, you know, not to have people notified, and all of a sudden you're looking in your checks. I don't know, $180 short, and you have no idea why. Uh, you know, it could be quite shocking. It, in the past, we have notified all the members. I, I, I believe in this case it was the union press. I can double check, though, if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Public works you're referring to? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. double check. Um, while we're on financial report, can I just ask what the status of the facility study is town wide that we approved? money for? Has an RFQ gone out on that? Where are we at with that? Since we've talked about it so much tonight already. I know. 
Uh, that's a good question. Uh, it has not gone out. Has anything been developed? Uh, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, we've got some preliminary stuff. Right. We're, talking, we're trying to use the firm, I guess, that did the Board of Ed work um, last what? go around as like a starting point. So they haven't started in 2003, the or did they? Do they have a more recent one? Than I that? believe they had that's the 2003 one. That's. Yeah, that's, a, that's, pr that's 11 years old already, yeah. so I, 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 I'm, I, I'm not so sure that we want to start with that. Yeah. I think that was what the, that's what the last I kind of checked with the uh, first thing, that's what the situation was. I can double check for you and get an answer. Okay. Status of it. Well, only because we're coming up to a budget season right. pretty soon, and it would, since we approved this money right. last budget season, exactly I, I right. think something needs to be done with that so we have information right, by the we, time we get to budget. We, have, we can't move forward. Right. You know, we need this. The conversation you had is the nail on the head. Yeah. That's where do we want to be 20 years from now? Right. Exactly. exactly. And that's what we got to do. No, you're exactly right. right. Again, the answer for you. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, man. And just kind of a quick informational thing. I had asked Michael, and he's going to gather the information for us. Uh, there's been some additional work done at the school with tree removal, and um, he's going to gather all the information uh, for us as far as the cost. I know Fran was involved a little bit, public works. Um, but I just thought, you know, seeing it was top property, that the entire council should know and have the cost. And what was being done. And I believe Carrie uh, did go out there uh, with Fran and look. So. Okay. Um, item 12E, Bittersweet Drive survey update. Yeah, I think Kurt's got yeah, um, something. Basically, the work was awarded following the action of the town council at the last meeting. Purchase for an issue is now applying get results back and all. Back at town council regarding the um, potential encroachment and the nature of the encroachment, and then we'll go from there in terms of decisions of what, what to do. So we'll put baseball on our money. Basically, <coughs> thank you. Al, oh, you have any questions on that? Yeah, I'm yeah. That's right. Um, item 13, new business discussion and action. A, resolution with respect to the authorization, issuance, and sale of not exceeding 600000 for the Town of North Brantford general obligation, or 6 million, sorry, Town of North Brantford general obligation funding bonds. Uh, periodically, uh, we get the opportunity to refinance some of our outstanding debt sure many have done with their home mortgages over the past few years. Uh, we have an opportunity with our 2010 uh, bond issue. If we refinance it, we can have the opportunity to save about $258,000 in budgetary savings over the lifespan as depicted by the illustration presented by our uh, financial advisor. Uh, so looking for the count, there's a bond resolution that was prepared by uh, Robinson and Cole and I'm sorry, on the back of the first lady is the bond resolution. So the motion is to accept the resolution in its entirety on the back side of that cover memo. So this doesn't extend the term of the loan, does it? Uh, just, negative. Is it? Was it 20 years, and so this is the remaining 15 years? Correct. Savings? Correct. And the, the other thing we could do is, all, if you look in that, sec, that third page in where it has the budgetary savings by year, that's basically a level uh, you know, 15 to 13 to 17,000 per year. When the time comes, we can look at that, maybe even structuring it to, as all of you know, we're going to be peaking in 2000, I think 16, 17 is our last big year. 17, 18 is when the things drop off. There might be an opportunity to bring some of that savings forward and re recognize that savings in 16, 17. Instead of waiting to 17, 18 for the magic to happen, can we for that magic day to happen? If we maybe bring it back to 17, to 16, 17 as well, we maybe accelerate some of that capacity. And pay it off quicker? Yeah. Right. Well, recognize the savings quicker. Right. Um, well, that would be very important, especially 
planning on future projects once we get this facility studies done. We need to get this whole deal rolling and, and really planned out well. Mm -hmm. If we're going to centralize services and make a little meeting place for everybody in town and, and you know, do, do what all the other towns do, it just makes sense. Get rid of the old stuff, get something new, and put the old stuff back on the tax rolls. Anthony, <coughs> one question. Um, you know, you and I had some email dialogue the past few days. Quite by coincidence, I know someone who had received a check for redemption of the North Brantford bond, and they asked me why. And I assumed it was tied into this matter that was on our agenda tonight. I emailed Anthony and asked what was going on. It turned out it was actually the refunding of the 2009 bonds that we approved last year. But the actual refund to people that own these bonds did not occur until November 1, November 1 2014. So the question that raised in my mind when I was thinking about it is if we're approving this now, and if I'm reading this correctly, it says these bonds are callable 11-1-2016, which is right. two years from now. Does that mean that a holder of the bond will be paid off or refunded, so to speak, on November 1, 2016? Correct, it goes to an escrow account from now till then. That's so factored into the, into the whole cost savings is the escrow cost, the escrow account fees, things like that. Well, that's my question. We're closing this refunding now, but we're not gonna use that money for <coughs> two years. Correct. Are we paying interest on that money now? I mean, people aren't giving us money for to sit in escrow for two years without expecting it to earn something. Right, you're exactly right. All those costs have been factored in 258. See, the, the facts of the bonds will be outstanding still. And that $6 million is going to earn some interest for us in the escrow account, not, not a ton in today's marketplace. But all those costs have been netted out to get to that 258 number. All the cost of issuance, everything else. So you're, you're right. The person who holds, holds the bond for the town of North Brantford won't get paid until November 1 of 2016. That money, that $5.3 million, we're going to issue new bonds today. It sits in an escrow account, and an escrow agent then pays it out over the life of those bonds. So from 16 to 30, whoever your bond is in that spectrum, they will pay it out out of this new pot of money. All right, and with all of those costs factored in, it's 258. We still save a quarter of a million dollars over the life of the bond. That is correct. But that's still in, in this resolution. It still says it's based on the interest rates. Well, my, my comment was the 258 is based on the projection that they ran. The day you actually sell the bonds is when you actually know how much you're actually going to save. Wow. It could be 300000 it could be 200000 So on the day of the market, the day the market pricing is, they'll give us a call and say, okay, the market went against you. Yeah. You're only going to save $10. Yeah. Pull the deal. We're not going to do it. So what does our money guy get for doing this? What's their fee? Uh, what page is that on in all these pages? It might be in there. If you turn to page one where it says refunding bonds, Cost of issuance is seventy-five thousand dollars. That's the financial advisor. That's the bond council. That's the cost of issuance seventy-five thousand. All right. Yep. So on this page, so so this thing is for six million dollars. So what is paramount <coughs> on that page? The five million three hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. Right. What is that? You're going to issue. We're going to issue bonds for a total of five point three five five million dollars. There's a premium on top of that that we're going right, to see. What's that premium? <coughs> Based on interest rates. So that 500000 The premium compared to the par value. So here's my thing. I've been at this a long time and still haven't figured this out. <laughs> but somehow it's like, no matter what we do, it's like, so, so my thing is, let's say that we owe $10. Okay. Are we bonding, are we, is our new bond $11? Could be 1050. But at a lower okay, interest, see, but at a lower interest cost, so that at the end, our debt service is cheaper. If we get a favorable interest rate. So what happens to the $75,000 fee if on the day that we, don't do we it. sell it, they doesn't don't get a dime? Get so paid. they do all the work, try and sell the bond, it's right. not favorable, and they did all that for nothing? That's why they make so much money on it. Again, that's, that's the bond council, financial advisor, uh, Moody's for a rating upgrade, the cost, the, the escrow uh, agent fees. There's, whenever you have refunding, there's a, a third party that goes and calculates the cost and verifies the verification. There's like eight different people that are involved in these refundings. 
So again, that net number is 250. That's why the motion says I'll report back to so you. So it's 258,000 over the remaining 15 years. Correct. And currently wow. spelled out in that in that third page in now of how the breakdown of that $258,000 plays out. 15,000 in the current year. Uh, there's actually a slight increase in 16 the way the bond falls, the interest rates fall, then 17,000, 16,000, and so on. Look at that, that 258. On that, on that page also, you see where it says percentage of present value savings, 3.88? Like right in the middle. Yeah, this page. Typically, the third page now. typically, two is your, is your threshold. If it's above two, it's a good deal for you. So at 3.88, it's, it's a very good deal for us. There's a lot of cushion in there. And again, the day of the pricing, when that actually happens, we'll know the final amount of the actual savings. Uh, his estimate right now is 258. It could fluctuate. You know, and if it goes down so bad, we pull the deal. I'd like to make a motion. Be it hereby resolved that the North Brantford Town Council adopts the attached resolution entitled, entitled a resolution with respect to the authorization, issuance, and sale of not exceeding $6 million Town of North Brantford general obligation refunding bonds in its entirety and instructs the Treasurer Finance Director to report back to the Town Council the final amount of the transaction and resulting savings that the Town will see from this refinancing. Second. Moved by Councilor Angeloni. Seconded by Councilor Fawn. Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. <coughs> Councilor Fawn? Yes. Councilor Fisi? Yes. Councilor Hobson? Yes. Councilor Rose? I guess so. Was <coughs> that a yes? I hope so. <laughs> That's an emphatic yes. <coughs> yeah. It's all good. Report back to us on the day that it's uh, sold so we know how much money we say. Gotcha. Item B, discussion of Fowler Road. this the project um, that is the supposed 55, 55 and over housing project that keeps getting downgraded and they're basically just yeah. taking yeah. stuff out of there right now? Well, yeah, I know <laughs> Kurt, Kurt and, and staff have been out there to monitor. We've gotten a, a number of complaints uh, with respect to the, um, you know, noise, um, dust, debris, things of that nature, truck traffic and so forth. Um, so um, I don't know. If Kurt, Kurt's had firsthand knowledge of it, but um, you know they're still continue to monitoring where they are in terms of that that project. Um, I'm not sure at this point. You know, there's no time limit on what they can do and what they can't do. Well, I, I think there's a time limit. I just limit. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, what I can do is you know circle back and, and also talk with with Carrie in terms of the project and get uh, get a report. I know there was some concerns here, so we put it on the agenda to to ascertain any questions you may have about uh, what's going on. Yeah. I, I need a quick overview and then we'll go from there. Basically, the plan is already approved a, uh, a site plan for a 55 older community off the end of Fowler Road, on about a 90 acre site, a number of years ago. Um, and they came in, um, they were approved in basically phases. And the initial phase is removal of material so they can monitor them during the process and, and keep an eye on it. And, and that's what basically is going on now. Uh, and, and there are time limits. And that, I'd be lying if I told you the exact time limit. I think they probably got a year left on, on some of the removal, uh, the initial phase of, of the operation. Um, so we've been monitoring in terms of dust. Um, blasting has been an issue because a lot of blasting over there. Um, and the um, removal of materials. There's a concern is trucks, noise, mud. And, and the like. Uh, the town planner and I just went out there today. And again, um, we've been going periodically to keep an eye on it. Um, generally, the site has been pretty clean. Uh, the road, 
We've had a few issues in the past, but they've, they've kept on top of it. Uh, one of the recent calls I'm just, um, that we received was that a lot of vehicles were coming into the site for hauling material in, and that's not part of the approval. The approval is material goes out as part of the site development. And we uh, met with the, the owner of the property and said, no, they're actually taking material from somewhere in Guilford and bringing it to East Haven. And that's why people saw a lot of trucks, well, I, I believe, over uh, on Route 22 over uh, past weekends or the like. But they're not going into the site. So again, we, we've uh, the town planner and I went there uh, to monitor that. Uh, we've also we had an issue with our noise meter. Um, we had to acquire a new noise meter because the other one broke, and we couldn't take a few readings now. But we're up and operational in terms of that. So. That's sort of it in a nutshell, I mean, and we are trying to monitor. There is, there is a P&Z approval on it, and, and, and trying to make sure they comply with the conditions of that approval. Um, <coughs> that's so where we are, and, and again, like I said, we're, we're <coughs> So what happens if they do all this removal, and then <coughs> all of a sudden they say, we, you know, economic conditions, we can't, we're not going to build anything here on that. Is that a possibility? I would say that certainly is a possibility just financially, you know, something comes up. But to be honest, with, I mean, I'll give you my, my overall feeling on the whole thing. If something were to happen, you know, if, if it's a stabilized, a maintained site, it's an industrial zone, something's going to happen there. I mean, it really becomes more site ready. I mean, because again, the whole point here is to try and encourage some type of economic development. Right, something um, is. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest with you, the, the owner slash developer, they came in, I think, when they went to playing zoning, their concern was, you know, we have to go out. It's very difficult to bond. Well, I know it's been work. downgraded from his original site. Well, actually, they're, they're still with the same plan. Um, I think they're going to come back to sort of, because the market has changed. And this is what I've heard. They may come back for a reconfiguration type of thing because of when this was approved, the initial approval. A uh, number of years ago. A number of years ago. You know, again, the economic condition out there um, is a little bit different, and they, they, I think they're going to come back with something with a little more of a um, improvement, enhancement is what they're talking about, but we haven't seen it yet. So they're operating on the. Uh, and you said that zone like industrial, like, but they want to put a 50 and over. Yeah, and, and that's allowable within that zone. Okay. Um, the reason being is there's not a whole lot of industrial uh, development that's occurring in that. You know, right. It, it, it's right. elsewhere, other parts of the country, other countries. Uh, we're, we're just not doing it. not a bad way to go, to be honest. I mean, with it's um, that type of use. The Planning Zoning Commission looked at that. It's a good use in terms of a tax generator. Um, so that's basically the status. And again, the, the town planner and I will do our best to try to keep uh, to monitor it. We were short staffed for a while during the summer. You know, there's periodic inspections here and there, but um, we're trying to be diligent in terms of um, keeping an eye on what's going on. So when you were over there, I had some people that live on uh, Route 22 who actually showed me an aerial photo of it in their backyard. And when I looked at the photo, I would have said that there was a fairly large pile of millings in there. Did you see anything no. like that? No, we, we, we were out there today, and, and in the uh, past, I haven't no, seen milling. So you saw no borrowed material on that site? Didn't appear to be any borrowed. I mean, there's there's a lot of overburden that that stockpiled um, that has vegetation growth. There's material be the overburden is removed. They're, they're crushing some stone, you know, because there's a lot of blasting occurring. They got to take out that material as part of development. It didn't appear to be, no, I, I didn't see okay. any millings. Um, and again, we were our biggest concern: dust, noise, uh, traffic, are the biggest things we're trying to monitor for. So, okay, thank you. Could you check on the uh, on the date when they're so? What do they have a special use permit? It's a special use permit. In the, in the site that so for the next have. meeting, tell us when that's up. Well, certainly. Thank you, Kurt. Public Works request for acquisition of ambulance chassis. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
we got we that's the same thing as last year. We got the ambulance that went down to get remounted. <clears throat> so the opportunity there is to buy it back. Um, the the buyback price is twenty five hundred bucks. So I mean the other one's running very strong. It's only got a hundred and something thousand miles on it. Um, <clears throat> they're going to charge me five hundred dollars to put a something in the back so the guy can drive it back. Um, but it it's a good deal. I you know it's going to help us out truck wise. We have a truck problem with the mechanics truck, so we're going to try to build a truck for them and then have another truck for the highway. So in order to make the deal work, I have to make the fire department whole. That's their trade-in value is $2,500. So I have to put $2,500 in their account to, to make the deal go. You can see the numbers in the, in the thing. I know the money that, the 25000 that we got, that we weren't supposed to buy vehicles with, mm -hmm. I was willing to not buy two things and use some of that money to buy to pay back the fire department and then I'm still short um, twenty one hundred dollars. Well what aren't you gonna buy and use this money for? I'm just replacing some trucks that are sitting there. Right, I know that, but you said there's some other things you weren't gonna buy to put money into the truck. Oh there was a compactor and a, a blade sharpener. That was in the original twenty five hundred uh, thousand that I got. Right. You already have a blade chart. I mean, I'm, I ha yeah, it has to be upgraded, but right. it, you know, in order to make this thing work, this fun funding deal? wise, you know, I can I can take that twenty five. Uh, I think it's twenty five hundred. <coughs> well, you don't need the other stuff, is what I'm trying to ask you. Well, I'll have to like, put it in the budget for next year. I mean, it's one of those things. And this is what you want, and this is what you need. Yeah. Well, once that, then, then, then the, the utility body is going to go on one of our old one tons. Yeah. And then that truck, you'll see in the capital that will be putting a body on, on that. Yeah. The we need to keep you guys at least somewhat. Mm, going. It's, a, it's a good deal. Uh, the, yeah, the, 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 truck, there's, the truck runs, the one that we built is great. And it's a good fine, fine So I'm, I'm going to be just short if I use that money out of 25000 So 2100 so would come out of contingency, Anthony? Sure. I mean, is that what you're proposing? It doesn't say on here. Yeah, but it's, I mean, quite honestly, if you can just bury that account for the time being and we'll see how the winter goes. He has an uh, equipment account that we would take it out of. <coughs> just bury it out of there for the time being, knowing that the price will come back and backfill it later. Right. We can keep our fingers crossed for a mild winter this year. We can right. Good cover luck. it rather than go to contingency. Rather than take okay. money right now. That's All right, fine. so you can fund it within, and then we we'll might have to. Do line item transfer later? Yeah. Correct. Okay. So do you need a motion from us to approve this? And there's nothing on here, so I didn't know. I think you should make a motion, yeah. Um, your, your, your motion on the 25000 originally was for non-vehicular uses, so I would, something to the effect of you're willing to, you know, Reconsider your earlier motion and allow the public works to spend uh, was it twenty eight hundred dollars, friend? Yeah, twenty eight hundred dollars of that twenty five thousand dollars of non vehicular money towards this purchase, and the balance will come from his. Uh, well, thirty seven hundred it says right. There's a balance of approximately thirty seven hundred left from the previous. Yes. Approval. I'm sorry, thirty seven hundred. Yeah, it's thirty seven hundred left from the twenty five thousand. Okay. Right. Okay, I'd like to make a motion to approve the use of $3,700 from the Public Works original amount, uh, capital expenditure amount of 25000 for the purchase um, of vehicles for Public Works. Okay. Moved by Councilor Angeloni, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. Are we going to do it in two motions? Yeah, we can do it. Don't you have to say 2100 You got 2100 $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, $2, well, Anthony said that we could hold off on that and take back it back. It. back no, I think it, he needs to. We need to approve the expenditure, right. irrespective of where it comes from. He's saying he doesn't have to reallocate it from contingency. Right. You can just prove the expenditure, the total amount of the uh, fifty-eight hundred dollars total expenditure, thirty-seven hundred coming from the twenty-five thousand, okay. and then the balance coming out of uh, public works operating budget 
to be addressed later on as far as funding source. If he doesn't use it for road salt or something, maybe right. he have the money. If he does, don't have to take that out of the pay. Pay. <coughs> But either way, he's spending it now. Right. So he's plus 2100 Okay, so, okay. so you, you want to do it? To reallocate 3700 from the original non-vehicular budget right. plus the allocation of an additional $2,100 not previously budgeted for a total, total expenditure of $5,800 for these two improvements. Okay, so that's how the motion will work. Absolutely. <laughs> Second. Second that. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. No, that's fine, Joe. <laughs> Not a problem. It's a joint effort. <laughs> Roll call. Mayor Candelora? Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth? Yes. Councilor Angeloni? Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. Councilor Bonin? Yes. Councilor Fusey? Yes. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. <coughs> Out of 14 citizen statements, petitions. <coughs> Motion to go into um, Just one thing before we go into executive session. Um, I just wanted to make a note in the packet we received regarding planning and zoning meeting on Thursday. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk that this meeting was going to be held at NBIS, but according to the agenda that was posted, it is not at NBIS. It, it, it is at Town Council Chambers, and that is because the J.J. Sullivan um, thing has been put on hold pending uh, the review from the state and getting a decision back from the state. So I talked to the town planner today to confirm this, and she said basically that that item will be on hold until the state rules on that matter. So even though it says it's continued until November 20th, that could get pushed back again. It's totally out of our hands. We are waiting for the state. So just so that the residents are aware, that meeting is not at NBIS. It will be in council chambers. And J.J. Sullivan, they will not be discussing that because the matter is on hold. I'll make a motion to move into executive session. Town attorney, manager, and moved by Councillor Fusey, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wentworth. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, to get myself and Ken and that as well. And Ken and Anthony. Roll call. Yes. Deputy Mayor Wentworth. <coughs> Yes. Councilor Caprio? Yes. Councilor Diamond? Yes. yes. Councilor Bonin? Yes. Councilor Fusey? Yes. Councilor Hodgson? Yes. Councilor Rose? Yes. 